Solomon, rich. Money. Okay, money. Money, <laughs> money. Hello and welcome back to the Croak and Crow podcast. I'm in a good mood. My name is Spencer Cardia. And I'm the Atlantic, not the Pacific. Not the Pacific. We roll Atlantic around here. And this is Frank in his Atlantic blue sweatshirt. And you know why I'm so ha- in a good, such in a good mood today? Because I'm rich. Ah. I'm rich. I'm spiritually rich. Oh, that's the best kind. That's the best kind. Yeah. That's the only kind it should be. Right. Yeah, take that. Can't eat pennies. Can't eat pennies. But um, yeah, the spiritual economy is doing well. Oh. That's a good... I'm making money in the spiritual stock market, oh, if you will. I've uh, invested in the right stocks. I would love this channel. I would love a channel like that. Yeah. Like, you know, with the... with the, uh, It would be changing the numbers yeah, and yeah. stuff. Well, the prayer... The prayer... Uh, <laughs> yeah. SMP stands for um, something in prayer. Yeah. Give me an S word. Give me... <laughs> I don't know. A, a spiritual... No... Yeah, the S&P. Spiritual prayer is up yeah. three points Spir- today. The spiritual national product. I guess we have a lot more <laughs> investors praying. But yeah, guys, it's a good day. It's a good day to be alive. Yeah. It's a good day to podcast. It's a good day to talk to you fi- fine folks. Um, yeah. It's another birthday. Yes, it is my cousin's birthday. Yesterday, it was my aunt's. Alexandria. And now it's my cousin's. They're born and a day apart. Therefore... If it's Alexandria's birthday, it has to be Earth Day. It's Earth Day. So it, maybe that's why I'm so happy. Yeah. I you just, love the Earth. I, I, I do. <laughs> Some call me aren't, earthly. Aren't you an Earth sign? Yeah. Tar- if we're in Taurus gang. Yeah. You think that's one of the reasons why they put um, Earth Day on I don't May know. Or April 22nd? I don't know. Taurus, Earth. Maybe. It could be the reason. Yeah. But hey, guys. Did you do anything for the Earth today? Let me think. I want to walk. That's good for you. I meant, I think, aren't you supposed to like... Like plant a tree. Plant a tree or oh, clean that's up funny. some my, trash. My brother, he was setting up his garden, built a fence around it and got all yeah. prepared for that on Earth Day. Don't even know if you knew that. Right. I watched from my car. <laughs> so. <laughs> Hopefully it's an electric car. It is a, yeah, it's a gas powered car. <laughs> Yeah, whatever. Yeah. I do what I can. I recycle. Yeah. Um, It's Thursday, guys. Um, You know what that means. Walk, walk through. Th- through th- Thursday. Dance. It's walk through Thursday. Dance Roll time. the intro. Welcome back. Hope you're having fun. Cuz walk through Wednesday just begun. All right, guys. We're back. It's walk through Thursday. An interesting time of the week. Wait, you know what I just realized? What? I know why I'm so happy today. Thursday is my favorite day. Oh, right. We realized that. We established that three podcast. I forget which podcast that was, but yeah, yeah Thursday is my favorite day. Who would have thunk? Right. Yeah, guys, it's Walk Through Thursday, an interesting time of the week where we take a look in the Bible, pull out an unsuspecting verse, we just grab it by the horns. Yeah. And it's like, no, please. And it's like, nope, we're going to dissect you. Every Every podcast... We weave the world and the spirituality together. Oh, yes. But this is super intentional. This is from the inside out. Usually we go outside in. It's You're like right. Pottery. Did you check out yesterday's pottery podcast? We're like, what's spiritual about pottery? Right. Or what's a message we can get from it? Right. This is we get a spiritual message and then we find the deeper meaning. And yeah. And also find how it how it's showing itself in the world today. Mm. Facts. Sheesh. <laughs> All right, guys. So today, um, what what um verse are we going over? Okay, I'll tell you. Yeah, take your papers. Take mind your papers. Mind your papers. All right, we're we're looking at Kings today. Yeah. Who wrote Kings? Is that Paul? No, it's. Is it Old Testament? You're looking right at the answer. Is that Jeremiah? Yes, Jeremiah. It's Old Testament. I I knew that. One Kings, Jeremiah, and that's why I put the paper in there because just to tell you about Jeremiah. Just tell you a little bit about Jeremiah, who has my favorite um, Bible verse. That's the "Don't let the wise boast and the oh, mighty boast." Okay, he Jeremiah 
very well respected prophet mm-hmm. in uh, Christianity, Islam, and Judaism. So he he's up there. He's he, not he makes Christian. it across the board. He makes it across the board. Yeah. Um, he also, uh, as you are an art aficionado, um, Michelangelo painted him. I was just looking at that. Yeah, Rembrandt. Michelangelo, one of my favorite artists. Right, and born on my birthday. Mm. He, was he born on my birthday or died? Salvador Dali was born. On, he's my yeah. artist birthday. Artist. I share. So Jeremiah um, will have written that what we're going to look at. Okay. And we're looking um, at a verse from One Kings. Now we're looking at One Kings eight. One Kings eight. Okay. Follow along. Pull out your Bible. One Kings eight uh, goes for. How many verses? A million. 66. 66 verses yeah. in 1 Kings 8? Yeah, in chapter 8. Those are the hardest verses to get through when I was reading the Bible. Nothing wrong. not saying they're, yeah. they're bad or anything, but obviously, if you're reading the Bible, I recommend you take it bit by bit, part by part, so mm-hmm. you don't get burnt out. Right. You don't try to read it in a week. Right. But usually, as a natural stop in place, you at least get, like, you want to get through books. Then you get through chapters and it's like some of them were just on. Like I'd right. have to, it would be three days. Right. Okay. Yeah. But, you know, I did. Um, so what we're doing is 1 Kings 8. 8, 23. 23. So verse 23. That's my favorite number. Yeah. So it's it's um, going to be verse 23. But um, just to tell you that I did read the chapter. I read the chapter through. So you went above and beyond. I went above and beyond. And um, I this one, this one in particular I find is easy reading. Okay. Because um, the green line is the prayer. So what it's about is Solomon dedicating the temple. Yes. Okay. Solomon's temple. Right. So David, your guy, David wanted to build the temple. Yes. And God said. Nope. No. Nope. Your son's going to do it. Okay. And so now Solomon's like, it's my time to shine. My time to shine. Solomon builds the temple. One Kings 8. Is Solomon's dedication of the temple. It's when everyone came. It's uh, okay. the party. It's like the uh, sacrifices. The, it's like the cutting of the. Yeah, they had the big scissors. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, and so it all makes sense, you know. Of course, um, of course, he's going to make a dedication of this wonderful temple. You gotta. Therefore, that's why um, it's easy to read, and I recommend it being read. And I don't know if. If we'll do it, we'll probably do it again for another walk through Thursday because, of course, we're not going to read or talk about 66 verses today. No. But the prayer that Solomon um, says. and Simon says. <laughs> Solomon is saying to God, if you would please do these things, um, is all this. And it's so nice. It's and it's and it's so talking about everybody, strangers, sinners, mm. foreigners. Um, God, please it's 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 saying please and it's also saying i know you will mm. i know that i know that when when these people are good in their hearts that you're just gonna um reward them yeah so that's that we're gonna read that and the other paper i gave you is just more about it's it's not a bible verse it's, it's an article about um the dedication of the temple because jews um celebrate they they constantly commemorated every year um, in Shemini at Zeri. Yeah, I guess. Um, also called the Feast of Tabernacles. So anyway, that's background for the verse we're about to read. Jeremiah wrote it about Solomon. Solomon's talking to God and he's saying, I hope you like the house that I built, you know, the church that I built. And please... Just keep being nice to keep all of us. Keep on all, keeping on. All of us. The audience right now, our viewers are probably at the edge of their seat. They're like, tell us the verse. We yeah, need to hear it. tell us the verse. And I'll tell you it. And I believe it's the first line, really, when he starts the prayer. Yeah, see? So this, so it's not the first line of eight, of Kings 8, no, it's but it's not the first, first line of when he starts the prayer. Right. So for 22 verses. It's the, introducing. They're the whole, introducing. Okay. And, then, and then it's like, okay, now we're going to hear the, but we're just going to hear the first part. Um <clears throat> all right envision you're in the the temple that Solomon created for God crowded around you are all of the high priests and the locals of all levels 
And Solomon, he steps up to the plate. And this is what he said. Lord, the God of Israel, there is no God like you in heaven, above or on earth below. You who keep your covenant of love with your servants who continue wholeheartedly in your way. That's simple enough. That's simple. That's simple. what I was saying. I don't know um, how far we, we, you know, I'm saying we could, we could cherry pick through the prayer um, or, you know, we could do all sorts of things because it's so exciting. It's such a celebration. It is such a celebration. They normally would sacrifice during these um, dedications and um, they would, you know, have a, have a table and they would have a lamb or whatever. Yeah. There were so many animals because this this celebration like Noah's was, Ark. was so giant that they just had to do it like basically in the on like think of like a giant musical festival and it was just like the whole property because it was like uh it was like um what's that festival back in your time Woodstock my time was that in the seventies uh, I was a baby <laughs> first of all and I think it was the sixties oh. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, no, it's so, so yeah. So Lord, the God of Israel, there's no God like you in the heaven above or on the earth below. Facts. You keep your covenant of love with your servants who continue wholeheartedly in your way. So do you want to talk about this or do you want to talk about the whole thing? I don't know. You don't know. <laughs> you just got so excited reading this and you're like, this needs to be well, sure. I'm happy. Um, I'm, I'm here for it. Yeah. Um, eight, 1 Kings 8, 20, 23 uh, was in my um, med- my meditation book that mm-hmm. it was because my meditation book is very small little. And what's that called again? Oh, my goodness. Okay. Put you on the spot there? Yeah. Jesus is where. Uh, it's right here. I saved you. I saved you. In Thank, post, you. Post Thank you. Thank you. Video editing. It's very short because it's just it get, it's just you wake up and you say, OK, this is how we're going to go. So you can start your day um, just saying that. You know, you're connected to the God, yeah, and that um, he is constantly loyal to servants. We talked about that in 23rd Psalm, that how wonderful that a go- our God cares about us when we are not. Yeah. On. Yeah. No. Definitely. Um. Yeah. I'm trying to like cherry pick here, but I'm also trying to. I know. I'm sorry. I didn't give you time. Um. So the reason that I liked the prayer when I read down through the prayer was because um, sometimes when you read the Old Testament, you hear a lot about chosen people, favored people, and you, you feel, oh, that's not me. Um, and the reason I liked this prayer is because it is saying completely a complete conversation to God um, and it's from the conversation it's opened to everybody everybody who who are his children and everybody who wants to be part of it yeah no the good thing about solomon and, and david is i think so much they they know and they believe that they're god's servant and so they never look down on it's like they see us all like when you're the king i'm talking about like king david king solomon level king and you see yourself as as just a humble servant right to God, how then are you going to exclude a servant to you? And, and right. it's like, do as you do. What is it? It's like, do to others as you want done to yourself. Right. And it's like when you're a servant, right? You're going to treat your servant. And so it's like we're all we're all in this. We're all in this. Together. And I also liked it because um, here's King Solomon, and he made this fantastic tribute to God and and um, this dedicated place and of holiness and honor and respect. But he doesn't want any like if when you read the prayer, he's not asking for like, didn't I do a good job? Mm-hmm. Please bless me and my children. Uh, he is asking God to look out for all of the very many people. Yeah, um, no, I'm um, in in what is what's this in one Kings eight forty one. I think this is one of the things you're talking about. As for the foreigner who does not belong to your people Israel, but has come from a distant land because of your name. For they will hear of your great name and your mighty hand and outstretched arms. When they come and pray towards his temple, then hear from heaven your dwelling place. Do whatever the foreigner asks of you, so that all the peoples of the earth may know your name as do your own people Israel. And may know that this house I have built bears your name. So that's saying, hey. 
Imagine. Open door policy. Right. And that's sort of what we say about um, as Christians. Um, we, we say you and I, we like to lead by example. Right. And that's sort of what this is saying. It's like it's saying have an open door policy. It's not saying it's saying so that when those person prayers are answered, people then other people see it and say, right. How how did that happen? Oh, I prayed to God. I had I had faith. I, I had a belief in, in this God and everything I wanted happened to me. And that's the important part. It's not. Right. All right, Israelites, we've got ourselves a temple. Everyone else can kick rocks. No, right. it's like pray to our temple. And when your prayers are answered, right. know that what, what we believe in is, is the truth. And it's so special because Solomon is not just talking to the foreigners and saying, come, talk to my God, ask my God. He will answer your prayers. He, this prayer is to God. Yeah. And it's showing such an open door because you said this is Old Testament. Old Testament. Old OT. So that's Old Testament. And the Old Testament is so territorial. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. So very. Yeah. Don't cross this line. This is ours. You know, there's going to be a war if you do. And this temple is saying that you're welcome. Yeah. And an interesting thing about Solomon, we talked about it before, is you have to know, like, when you, because you see a lot of things like, oh, why is he talking to God in that way of, he, he says it right there. He's like, um, do whatever the foreigner asks you. Like, yeah. It's like, you're telling God what to do, right. but then he, he doubles down and says, because I know you will. Right. Now, remember, Solomon was granted wisdom above all other mm. people. And it was it was the wisdom from God. It wasn't earthly right, wisdom. Right. So you got to sort of respect a lot of the things Solomon was saying if you truly believe God granted him that wisdom. And so right. I think that sort of explains sort of this. This is what you're going to do. Right. It's because he has the wisdom and he knows that God will. And it's also sort of talking to the people. Uh, that might even be more like the people that are all at the temple. And it's right. like, like, this is what God's going to do. I'm, I'm asking God. But I'm also saying this is what's going to happen. Right. And let all of you know that this temple is, it has an open door right. policy. Um, so the actual verse that we were, you know, working on oh. was 823. And I just wanted to maybe talk about the part where he says, um, there's no God like you in heaven above or on earth below. And yeah. What's up with that? What's, um, I have one. What's up with that? And that's the like you what's part. What's up with that? What's, what's up, up with, with that? that? What's that from? That's what's from Saturday Night Live. Uh, okay, Keenan. yeah. What's up with that? What's up with that? Um, so I would have been straight cool with Lord, the God of Israel. There is no God in heaven above or earth below. Yeah. Like, I guess it's just semantics I'm getting on. Well... Um, okay, so you could look at it one dimensionally, two dimensionally, three, three dimensionally, four dimensionally, a five fifth dimension. <laughs> <laughs> um, Actually, yeah. I mean, I think when you're talking about spirituality, wouldn't that be the fifth dimension? Or would isn't that, be that a group? The fifth dimension? Maybe. Okay. Um, so you could look at it like that and you could say, well, of course, they're just talking about gods in heaven. They're talking about gods in earth. This is the Old Testament. This is when people were making... Um, you know, yeah, idols. they had like the ball or whatever, right? But over I'm over. going to read it d- multi-dimensionally as we do at Croak and Crow. We are on all of the dimensions. Yeah, and um, the, f- I, the fifth dimension. <clears throat> I can't think of that group now. But anyway, I'm thinking so, and and that's how the Bible works because it's alive and it's it's changing and it's like the staircases in Harry Potter. Yeah. Um. Solomon, rich. Money. Okay, money. Money, money. <laughs> so you're saying, oh, you know Solomon wisdom, but also. He asked for wisdom. He got wisdom, but God said, hey, since you asked for wisdom, you're going to get that. Right. You're also going to get the crown and the jewels and the money. He has the money. Um, And so I, in 2021, I'm interpreting this as things that we make gods on mm, earth and, worship money yeah and when um worship fame when people talk about you know the, again we're back to that story of the rich, it's hard for a rich man to get into heaven yeah and it's not because god doesn't like rich people but it's because 
you're worshiping something else. You're like, how could heaven be better than what I had? Like yeah. we're talking rich, rich. The money. We're talking all the way up. Um, and so better than earth below. And I was just wondering if Solom- Solomon, or not wondering, but like I'm getting from it that the that for Solomon to use these words, and like you said, he's talking to a massive crowd of people mm-hmm. um, who aren't Solomon. Mm-hmm. And like I said, sometimes we idolize, we look, we don't, we don't idolize the money. We idolize the people who have the money. Yeah. And we think your life must be so comfortable, so, so joyous, yeah. so great. And like for Solomon. So again, we're talking money. We're not we're talking, talking <laughs> we're not talking buku bucks. Right. Right. Because it wasn't even just normal rich. No, he had. You know what that that temple that he built looked like? No. Probably crazy. I think right. they, they like had it all laid out in the Bible, like right cub- by cubit. So there's some like recreations of it, but gold, a lot of it. Right. So you know money. how people say, um, "Oh my gosh, like I can't imagine what that rich person is exposed to, or what they mm. could do, or you know what kind of party they could throw." So for someone like Solomon to say. There's nothing on earth nothing. that um, is better than you. Yeah, okay. He's, I, in I a like posi- he's in a position to say it. Yeah, yeah, and he knows. And right. That's sort of like, uh, he knew that from a young age. It's why he asked for the wisdom, and then he got everything. But he also even, who came over to question him? Um, it was the woman, like Far- Pharisee, Pharaoh. The woman Pharaoh who came over to really test if, he was the smartest person in all the land. Oh, really? And she asked him a hard question, um, and he got it right. And then she, I think she gave Jeopardy. Him, I think she might have even gave him more money. Really? But in the, in the like the pharaohs and stuff, I could be butchering this story, but walk with me, walk with me on Thursday. <laughs> they believe that they are descendants of gods, and so it's even that same sort of thing of this idolization of right. So if he's had one-on-one contact with a supposed descendant of their gods of you know they egyptian gods are completely different he sees all this and then he knows he's like i'm wise enough to tell you none of this this money these right. pharaohs come close which brings me to the next part of one kings eight twenty three, and um what i want to say is that talking about solomon smartest person in the world richest person in the world um, and not even of his own devices. It came from heaven. So it's like out of our thing. But what does he say? You who keep your covenant of love. Guys, I'm not fibbing. I'm not sitting here fibbing every time I say, if you boil the whole Bible down to one word, it's love. Because we're talking Old Testament. It's Old Testament. And that's like, that's what I'm always like. People are like, oh, Old Testament. If like if, if the, fire and brimstone, that's what they, they always say. They say the Old Testament God, and it's like right. they act like he had this change of heart, and it's I, that's not how I see it. If um, you read that prayer, that dedication prayer, that does not sound like a God, a spiteful, a spiteful, God. angered God. No. no, or how dare you? Yeah, a how dare you talk to me, God? You know, <laughs> you can't sit with us. Yeah, you're from the wrong side of Israel. Um, yeah. So no. it says covenant of love, not. Covenant of loyalty, covenant of inheritance, covenant of promise. Yeah, yeah, not covenant of, of any of those things. It's the covenant of love. And what is the covenant? It's, uh, an, it's an contract, a, a contract, and an agreement, and, and that's what it comes down to. Like, what that's what we've been, saying. bro. And God's covenant, maybe your covenant might be a little, you know, might have some holes in it. A covenant from God is going to be bulletproof. It's it's, bu- it's, it's, it's unbreakable. Bulletproof nothing to it'll lose. stand up in court <laughs> yeah no that's like it's what i've been saying like when when i i come on here and i talk about what does it mean to be a christian and by christian i mean I have a connection with who we call god it's love like that that it's what it is what it means and, and when people my belief no matter what if you're not breaking a covenant of love you're never that far away from god like that right. that is that's the agreement. Hey, do you, right. do you, do you have love in your heart? Then you have God in your heart. It says it right here. It's right black there. and white and a little yellow from a highlighter. And and blue. You so, printed print it out with color. You got money. Did I? No, that's from the printer. Yeah. You oh, right, right, right. Yeah. Okay, so 
cost an extra five cents if you're at the covenant of love Stables. is the covenant of love with the kings no. with the angels Mm-mm. Keep who's going. the covenant of love with I'll t- it's with god Wait. spencer he is <laughs> oh my god i'm sorry <laughs> let's try again so who's the covenant of love with sheesh uh, i'll tell you <laughs> It's with your servants. servants. So we, we, we're talking to God. Well, actually, I was I was half right. I wasn't listening. Yeah. And so I we I am part of the servants. Right. And so that's why. I was But what that. I'm saying is, God. Mm-hmm. The, 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 keep your God. Keep your covenant of love with your servants. Servants. God having a covenant with servants. Can you imagine mm. any rich, famous, uh, powerful person today who would have a covenant with servants? No. And it's just such a joyful um, sentence, you know, because again, it, serve, say, so it could say, who keep, who, uh, you, who keep your covenant of love with your servants who continue to fear you, who continue to be afraid of not doing it, who, of, who are, who are indentured servants to you. No, who continue wholeheartedly in your way. These are joyful people yeah. who want to give you the, it's, it's so reciprocal. Yeah. Um. And it's it it's it makes an even playing field of things that when you wouldn't think would be even. No, I mean we we said it. So yeah, right here it's um, we obviously always say servants, you know, like servants to God and all that. But right. it brings me back to Solomon's pops verse of you know twenty third Psalm, um, and which is you uh, prepare a table for me. Right, and, right. And we talk about the banquet being prepared, right. and, and it's like. Keep that idea, keep that same energy, knowing that like we're servants, and it's like when you have a a God that is the epitome of right. love, it's literally creating this banquet, this this prepare preparing a table for his servants. That's crazy. Yeah, and it's good you said you know continuing that energy or keeping that energy because um, we do feel happy when we go back and we are able to read these stories of communications that the prophets had with god yeah and connections and covenants and um and so when you talk about david who, who you love so much and what a great relationship he had with god and then his son it's 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 just like when we said we like matthew mark luke and john when, they're, when they all kind of talk about the same story because yeah. you're like yeah i i'm really able to put my human faith and trust in this yeah so with David going into Solomon and both of them so strongly um rooted in yes faith um yeah and definitely in knowing knowing that God is is what's important and then on top of that knowing that God is love and not not you know not right there talking about this this God to be feared and respected and it's you they know they know they know what god epitomizes right it's not a blind worship out of fear it's right. a hand in hand covenant right knowing that your god is love right so um the last two words are your way and so once again if it's a covenant of love mm-hmm. and the servants are wholeheartedly continuing continuing so we hear your way a lot in the Bible, and even Jesus is the way. Do you know that way? <laughs> and so Jesus is the Son of God, and and um, He is the way. And so it's really just saying in different ways and different angles, and but underlining because Solomon was full of um, a supernatural wisdom, so he's trying to let the people know with earthly wisdom. Love, 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 love. Yeah, no, you know what? I'm going to... You didn't think I'd be able to to dissect this last two words. You thought it was like, oh, I'll just talk about... I, I always think you can. I, I'm going to go further on this, guys. Okay, please. I'm going to go further on this. Please. Because I'm always saying, I'm always saying, how do you live a spiritual life in tune with God? And I say, it's mm-hmm. living by love. And I, I just said earlier, so I'm not going to repeat myself. Right. If you act lovingly, you are acting of God. Now, this could say... This could say, um, with your servants who continue wholeheartedly, um, wait, keep your covenant with your servants who continue wholeheartedly um, with you or uh, right. in you. 
Right. But it's in your way. Right. It's it's not saying who oh, follow you. Oh, it's back to what you what you That's preach. What, yeah, it, it, it's in your way. It's well, and what is his way? Love. Right. And, and and it says it so many times in the Bible right. of of like of us following the way. I am the way. Right. I am not way the truth and the light. Yeah, and and, and it's like it's I, I am the path, and the path is love. Right. So all of the semantics of like, it's not bow down before me. Right. It's go in, in the way that I've created. Get in this river that's flowing. <laughs> yeah. And um, yeah, so I, I think it's very particularly worded there. It's, it's not who continue wholeheartedly following you. It's who continue wholeheartedly in your way, in the way right. you've presented. Right. Love. So it's a really important verse. Yeah, sounds it's- like in a whole important chapter it's an important chapter important book it's an important um writer important who, writer <laughs> jeremiah check him out a lot of people um respect uh, respect and, and and um he did a good job of uh you know he was reluctant he was a reluctant prophet when he got called mm. to prophesize he was like oh i don't want to know it <laughs> um <laughs> and god has a way of making you not really. Come to he, your senses. I guess he just shows you that the benefits and stuff like that. Yeah. But, but guys, that is Walk Through Thursday. Day, day. day Thank day, you for coming. Day, um, day. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, maybe come back next week. If you don't yeah. want to, come um, back tomorrow <laughs> for Fun Friday. Right. That's always a blast. Right. Uh, let us know what you think down in the comments. You know, like, comment. And subscribe. Yeah. 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 Do those things. Do those things. Because one, when you do those things, um, YouTube sends us to people who uh, didn't type our name in or didn't click on us. Mm. Um, the only way, way, the word of the day, the only way is if other people make activity on the page. Yeah. And, and the fun thing about Walk Through Thursday is we're walking through these. Well, I mean, we re- may have read them before, but we're dissecting them for the first time. And so join the conversation in the comments, you know? Yeah. It's like, we're not, we're, we're not re- reading this and saying we have, we could probably read this for two more hours and keep talking and stuff. So if you pick something us, let us know. Enlighten us. Right. And um, yeah, but that's it. Peace, love, prosperity. Go buy some spiritual stocks. Become spiritually yes. rich. And um, peace.